They blame the banks. Consumer investigator Jason Knowles digging into that issue. He's here now. Jason? Well, Ravi Cheryl, they are known as zombie foreclosures. A homeowner thinks the foreclosure is a done deal. They move out and move on. Instead, the homeowner ends up being on the hook for thousands in municipal fines. They should definitely forgive the fines because it's not my property. Wanda Carter walks through a now vacant lot that used to be her home. The bank started the foreclosure process on her home in 2008. 14 years later, you're still on the hook for I'm this property. I'm still on the hook for this property. That's, that doesn't even make sense. She and her attorneys say she's fighting roughly $44,000 in City of Chicago fines issued after Carter thought she was no longer responsible for the home. It's like a chain around my neck. I can't seem to get rid of it. She was unaware that the City of Chicago was charging her for all of these violations. She was unaware that she was even still the owner, according to the legal record. The city of Chicago demolished the building and charged the homeowner $31,000 for doing so. The city of Chicago fined the homeowner more than 30 different times for uncut weeds, rat harborage, any number of different expenses. How can this happen after a foreclosure? Carter's attorney, Mario Reed, formerly an attorney for the Cook County Recorder of Deeds office, blames it on what's known as zombie foreclosures. This is when the homeowner thinks the property is foreclosed on and out of their name, but the banks fail to transfer the deed into the bank's name after homeowners like Carter hand over the deed. Reed says in some cases, lenders decide they don't want the burden of reselling a property in a struggling neighborhood. Right now, we have a caseload of over 10 different clients who have experienced this or are on the verge of experiencing this. Carter's lender, DB Structured Products, is a subsidiary of Deutsche Bank. It told the I-Team no comment. The city of Chicago says its records show that the deed is in Carter's name, making her responsible for the debt. However, Reed provided the I-Team with this document, showing he was able to get the deed into the bank's name in February of 2022. That, Reed believes, will eventually clear Carter of the debt when they attend an upcoming administrative hearing. I was told that I was no longer responsible for the property. It was theirs. Vanessa Jones, also a client of Reed's, is dealing with a similar battle with an investment property in suburban South Holland. I just found out about it, and it's pretty scary. After facing foreclosure, she provided a bank with her deed in lieu of foreclosure in 2008, but the bank never recorded the deed in its name. Jones Jones now owes more than $90,000 in village nuisance fines, which racked up after she thought the property was no longer hers. It's a large amount of money that is potentially extremely catastrophic for me and my family. Jones's lender is no longer in business and was dissolved after another bank bought its parent company. But the I-Team was able to get answers from the village of South Holland. A village attorney told me they're willing to work with Jones to get the debt out of her name if she transfers the property ownership to the village of South Holland. Still, the stress has taken its toll. For me, it's, it's unnerving. I will say that since I found out, I have not slept very well. The village of South Holland and the attorney in our story are hoping that potential legislation will require banks to move deeds in their names in these situations. If you are facing foreclosure, make sure you check records and verify that the deed has been transferred into the bank's name. Ravi Cheryl experts say you should not leave the property mm. until that is done. Wow. Every single little yeah. dotting of an eye, <laughs> yeah. crossing of a T. All right, so Jason. Revealing a stressful situation. Yeah. Well done, Jason. Thank you. Thanks a lot.